Okay, now that you've had a chance to work on this practice test, we're going to start going over some of the answers. We'll do this for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then let you keep working on more of it on your own also. Alright, so taking a look first at number one, you have an equation here that you need to solve and find the value for x that makes this true. What I need to do on here is take my x minus 4 squared create the box and multiply that out. So I'm going to do that work up here in the corner. x minus 4 times x minus 4. And I get x squared minus 4x minus another 4x plus 16. So the left side of that equation is x squared minus 4x and minus 4x we can combine to be minus 8x plus 16. That equals the other side of the equation, 3x minus 12. Now we want to get all our x values on one side. And actually, because this is a quadratic equation, got that x squared, I need to solve it by getting everything on one side and either seeing if I can factor it or use the quadratic equation. So I'm going to move everything to one side where that x squared is. That means I'm going to subtract 3x and add 12 to both sides. I'm going to line these like terms up. These cancel out to be 0. On the right side, on the left, I have x squared minus 11x plus 28. Looks to me like I can factor that. If you remember your factoring of your quadratics, I'm going to look for two numbers and do that x factoring thing. I want my numbers to add up to minus 11, multiply to 28. And those two numbers are going to be minus 7 and minus 4. Multiplying those two together gives me 28. Adding them gives me negative 11. So now I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 7 times x minus 4 equals 0. I can then set each of those mini factors equal to 0. So x minus 7 equals 0, solve that, and I get x equals 7. Take my other mini factor, set it equal to 0, and solve by adding 4 to both sides, x equals 4. So my solutions are 4 and 7. So I would choose number 3. Okay, moving on then, taking a look at number 2. We have 2a squared c, that entire quantity squared, in the numerator. So I'm going to square that numerator by taking my 2 that's in parentheses, squaring that, taking the a squared, squaring that by multiplying those two exponents, and taking the c and squaring that. This is just the numerator, gives me 4 a to the fourth c squared. And don't forget now we have a denominator here, a c to the third. a c to the third. Okay, if I have the same base in numerator and denominator, like these a's here have the same base, I take the numerator exponent 4, subtract the denominator exponent, that would be a 1 even though we don't show it, and I would cancel that out there. 4 minus 1, make that a 3. And for the C, there's only 2 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator. So when I go to subtract 2 minus 3, I'm going to cancel this out here and make this a 2 minus 3. So rewriting this, speeding it up, I'm going to have 4, 8 to the third c and 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So 4 a third c to the minus 1, that would be answer number 2. Okay, so now at number 3, which expression is not equivalent, let's get my pen back, not equivalent to 32x plus 28y. Hmm. Let's see, looks like all my answers are in factored form, so I'm going to follow my rules of factoring for 32x minus, or excuse me, plus 28y. 
First up, I want to ask myself, is there a GCF, greatest common factor, something that goes into both 32 and 28? Um, let's see, 4 does. I don't think anything higher than 4 does. So if I divide a 4 out of that, I'm going to take my 30, hmm, 32x, divide that by 4, and that's plus 28y, divide that by 4. But write my 4 down outside parentheses. Here, this becomes 8x. And this becomes plus 7y. So 4 times the quantity 8x plus 7y is equivalent to my original. I'm looking for something that's not equivalent. So I'm going to just cross that out because that is equivalent. We want something that is not equivalent. All right, um, erase the work that I have shown there so that we have more space. Looks like I can maybe manipulate some of these others and see if they equal the same thing. I'm going to distribute this 30 here and see if I get the same thing. 30 times 2x would be 60x minus Sixty y. I don't think that's going to be the same thing. So that's looking like that is not equivalent. Just going to do a quick check of the other expressions here and see what happens. If I distribute this two here and here, I'm going to get 32x plus 28y. So that is equivalent. Cross that one out. And if I distribute um, number two, I'm going to get 4 times 5x is 20x, 4 times 7y is 28y, and that's positive. And then 4 times 3x will be positive 12x. So I've got some like terms here and here to combine, giving me 32x plus 28y. Looks like that one is equivalent, so our answer is number 3. All right, looking at number four, we've got a function. Looks like this thing is quadratic. So it's going to be a parabola. And because I have a negative leading coefficient here, it's going to be opening downwards. That much I can see already. And um, here's my y-intercept there at negative five. Anyway, that's some interesting information about this function. What we want to know is which point does, let's see, at which point does the function reach its maximum value? So we want to know what the coordinate is for that maximum value there. A couple ways we could do this. We could rewrite this equation in vertex form, because the max and the min always fall at the vertex. Or I can use an equation, um, I can find the zeros and take the average of my two zeros to get my x-coordinate for my axis of symmetry and plug that in. Uh, I could also look at the values that they give me and see which ones of those fit on this thing. And if I'm looking for a maximum, I want the y value to be the highest possible. So this is saying I had a maximum those three say the maximum is four. This one says that the maximum is three. Probably not that one. But anyway, lots of ways that we can solve this. So um, in the interest of time, what I would suggest you do, use your graphing calculators. Put this function into your graphing calculator. So graph this on the calculators. And then take a look at your um, analyzing button. So press the second trace button. And then look at the maximum. We'll come back to that one, or actually we'll probably have you look at that one when I get back to class tomorrow. I'm going to leave you to finish that one up and take a look at number five. Which table is a linear relationship? So linear means that I'm adding the same amount each time or my slope is constant. So it looks like when I look at these graphs, my x values, they are always increasing by 1 on all of these. 
every single one goes up by one. So what I want to do is look at the y values and see which one of the tables is increasing or adding the same amount every time. So I'm going to look first at this table. 8 to 11, that's a plus 3. 11 to 14, plus 3. 14 to 17, plus 3. Definitely linear. I'm just going to do a check on the others really quickly. 48 to 24, I'm adding the same number, but it's a negative number. It's like adding an, a 24 to negative 24. 24 to 12, oh, that's not going to be adding a negative 24, so right away that's not linear. Let's look at the next one. 8 to 11 is a plus 3. 11 to 15, not, not linear. 0 to 3 is plus 3. 3 to 9 is plus 6, not linear. So the answer to 5 is number 1. All right, going to have you guys, if there's any time left, keep working on this on your own. Keep this sheet. Please bring it with you tomorrow, and I will go ahead and go over it. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Goodbye.